Hey there guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Country Thunder Machine Build. What we're going to be working on today is our power box. We are going to be hopefully repurposing this which was the old power box for all the electronics they had as far as cameras and little things they had here and there that are used on buses and hopefully turning this into the central brain station for everything we're going to do on this bus. So that's going to include our power inverter so we'll have power outlets throughout the bus inside and out. We'll be able to run all of our car audio right from this box to have one central hub for all the audio and then hopefully if things ever do go wrong, it'll be easy to follow because it'll all be right here. Unlike traditional RVs that have kind of cabinetry throughout the whole RV, this will be sitting here in front of the door at a lower place that's more accessible to the batteries. So everything that is being built can be easily worked on in the future. So our goal today is to hopefully get this mounted in the corner and run power wires so that we can get this hooked up to everything else that we're going to be putting in. Some of the things we'll be putting in today are going to include our MTX audio amplifiers. MTX was kind enough to provide us with uh, two amplifiers for this bus. One amplifier is going to be for the external sound system we'll be putting out there and they gave us a five channel jackhammer amplifier which is one of their high end lines of amps. It'll power four tower speakers that'll be sitting outside of the bus and a built in discrete subwoofer into the side of the actual bus. So that's going to be pretty exciting. From there, they also provided us with a 500 watt RMS amplifier to run our internal subwoofer. So this thing's going to have sound coming out the wazoo. From there, we need to run our inverter. And that is what this guy is going to do. I managed to find this guy at a pawn shop. I picked it up for around 120 bucks, but it is 3000 watts of power which means that we get to run incredibly thick wire to it. But this being here is going to allow us to live off grid at Country Thunder with no problems. And that's what we're excited to build on today. Because once this goes on, the rest of the electrics in the bus get to get installed. We currently only have two lights running and they're definitely jimmy rigged. In the meantime, grounded on the chassis of the bus, but it'll allow us to run switches, as well as run our pumps for the showers that we have in here and any other electrical device. We are debating putting an induction stove in, which may be an option in the future. And if we do use that, our 3000 watt inverter is gonna be perfect for running it. So at this point, let's get started on the build. cap, drain out oil waste, nope, no need for that. Do they let me guess on what I need to use? They do. That's nasty. Oh well. So we're going to go ahead and line this up and hope for the best. We're going to turn this unit on. Like I said, I can only make basic assumptions about this machine. No one came in and taught me how to use it. They definitely sold it to me though. An overwhelming success so far. For a minute there, I thought this tool was going to be beyond my brain capacity, but no, it actually made a really, really beautiful crimp. What I can now do is run this bottom end down this hole I've drilled out and bored out and actually run the rest of it to my power block. So my power block here will take my input at this front terminal. And then from there, all the other receivers will be used to transmit power to other devices that I want to power. And this will allow me to actually run that power without grounding out on the metal chassis that I have right here. This is going to make wire management so easy and beautiful. And there's very few things that warm my heart like good wire management. So on we go. I have my ground and I have my positive. So what we're going to do next is attach our positive wire to this and our ground terminal to the negative terminal right there. And what we're going to end up doing is taking this to our power block, which we saw inside, but only taking this to the chassis or frame 
of that power box to create a much stronger ground. Luckily, the whole bus is already grounded on the battery, which means the moment I throw some screws through that into the frame, it'll now be grounded out as well. And with the amount of screws we'll be using, we'll have plenty of ground to handle it. I'm simply throwing another ground wire to double up on that and keep a nice constant flow of electricity going through the cab. First, is I'm actually going to attach this end and put it in our power block. And by doing this, I'm isolating this wire and making sure that once I cover it, I can't really touch anything in arc, which as the one guy doing this, it's kind of important to me. I like to not fry. And then put that nut back on. And once I have that nice and solid on there, I'm gonna grab a wrench and tighten that down. Because if I get any wiggle, especially in a wire this big, I'm gonna get arcing. And I definitely do not wanna arc on this situation here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and grab my power meter and ground it out. And I want to make sure that when I'm doing this, I'm not accidentally wiring for 24 volts. I have two batteries here because it's a diesel. And though right now it's currently wired at 12 volts, if I accidentally cross wires, I can double my voltage and potentially fry anything I hook up to it. So I know that here I get 12 volts, grounded on battery one. Here I get 12 volts. But if I link them the wrong way, I will get 24 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer my power meter. And I'm going to make sure that I hook up to just these two connectors. Realizing the terminal this comes with has a, a hole that's a little too small. Once I've securely fastened this, I like to grab a stepper bit and kind of go in there gently and start to slowly bore out my hole. You want to be very careful when you're doing that because if it grabs, it'll twist on your wrist. That went through. And that looks like now it'll fit on my hole. So I'm going to reopen this up, double checking through the window that that is not grounding out on anything. And now I can disassemble this wing nut and attach my power wire. If you notice the lights blink, it's because my lights aren't completely hooked up to anything anymore. Is it scary? It's a little scary. So now I have positive power into my bus and I'm just gonna double things down with a nice ground. Just like that, we now have power in the cabin of our bus. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna stuff this in carefully and close that up. So now that we have all of that, we can kind of come back into the bus and start pulling things through. This will start to come this way and I'll start to stuff things through our power box. This one, our ground over here, will simply get a little terminal and drilled onto the frame. This one will get mounted onto the actual box and will be used to send power throughout the rest of the bus. And I do have a preference of tools at this point in my life. Milwaukee all the way. Just spend the extra money, buy the tools you need, and smile all the way home. And you got your job done quicker than you would have by cheaping out. So I went ahead and started by running all my wires throughout the cab. And now that I have them, I can actually run them down here into a nice little entry box or entry hole right there. And so even with all my labels, all my wires now have a place to go. And this is all going to get run to the next very important part of this, not just my inverter, but my main power supply. This unit will actually control all of our AC units that come in from offshore power and will also control all of our DC items that are being run just off the batteries. So this actually does two jobs. And to add to that, this will also keep my batteries charged up when I decide to connect the entire bus to 120 volt power when I'm camping. So this box is very, very important. Now, this bus is gonna have the ability to play sounds from inside, outside. 
but it's also going to have the ability to use the outside sound system with just an outside source. So if we mount a TV on the outside, we'll be able to switch between audio channels with a simple switch box connected to our jackhammer amplifiers. So we'll have full control and have actually two zones of sound without one interfering with the other one. This box will sit up here. And the next box will sit right there. And then finally, our inverter is going to sit right there. Then when everything is said and done, I will bolt this down to the floor and we'll have a fully functional power box. So now we're gonna grab our self tappers. These are really, really strong and work great on sheet metal, which is all I have here. The biggest secret I've learned with self-tapping screws is you don't have to force them in. You just have to let them do their job. And once they're in there, they're in there. Next, we're going to go with the jackhammer, five channel, mount him right there. And that'll give us just enough space to run the wires in between that we need. Also, if you're wondering if these screws get really hot when you use them, they do. Everything we do gets really, really hot. That's in, that's not going anywhere. Which is something all men have to say when they strap something down. So, now that we've got that going, I will bring in our power block and I'm going to mount that probably up here. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and push this in that into place and I'm going to drill this into the floorboard and make sure that we have something to sustain this and not let it rock around. At this point now I'm taking some of the original screws because my god that is really really nice thick screw here impacts are awesome tools because when my drill stops giving this will not. Whatever I'm hitting is really thick. Beautiful. And now we have a box that's securely mounted. That, again, isn't going anywhere. So to kind of run everything in this bus, I wanted to have an intelligent system that could help me as a pilot and help someone else as a co-pilot drive or function everything on the bus. So I chose the Vibrant Sound 13.3 Media Center. It's something that we build here at our shop and offer for a variety of vehicles. Now the cool thing about this is that we get to use any Android app we want. Now this is gonna be connected all through RCA cables and HDMI cables back down to my power box so all my signals have somewhere to go.